Okay, well today what we're going to do is construct a wooden panel canvas. I uh, recently was uh, commissioned by a friend of mine to create an anniversary present. Uh, what I did was I ran down to uh, Home Depot, grabbed a, um, I think a 2 by 4 sheet of plywood. It's, uh, I guess, uh, pretty thin, maybe a quarter inch. I like this surface because it's already sanded and it, um, unlike canvas, I can get much more detail on the smooth surface. So I've already had it cut down and I'm using 1 by 2 by 8 for the, uh, for the sides. Yeah. So the first thing to do would be to uh, measure this out and to cut it down. Now to uh, make these little pieces of wood easier to manage, before I start doing any type of angle cuts, I'm just going to break them down into uh, general lengths. Uh, the, uh, the painting itself is going to be 36 inches, but I like to give myself a little bit of slop so that way when I make the uh, 45 degree bevel right here, it's not going to splinter up the edges of the wood right here. measured the first one I can use it as kind of a guide since I have a lot of room to play with. The other edge is going to be uh, 15 inches long. I'm going to go ahead and set it for 16. Now move to 45 degree. So that way when the two edges are cut and beveled, they'll meet and uh, form a nice 90 degree. do is I measure out from the long edge of it right here. Now I'm just turn it around so that way when it cuts these two will be moving in like that. Okay, just a quick note. The uh, people who uh, cut the plywood didn't cut it exactly. Either that or I, I cut mine a little long because this edge over here is lining up. But when you get down to this edge, I'm uh, probably an eighth of an inch long. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that up. And um, yeah, as you cut each piece, go ahead and label which side they're going to be on so that way in case your panel isn't a true uh, square or one side is a little longer than the other you know everything will still match up. Well, I just cut my second piece and I, to make sure that it's the right length go ahead and put the first one up here and you know, kind of mock it up in place make sure it's even with the corners and flush with the edge Move your second piece into place and then check out how you did on the other side. And this one I had to cut just a little bit to trim it down. It was long again, but uh, now I've got it just right. I'm going to go ahead and label it. This is the second piece uh, corresponding on the panel. I got all four sides cut. I haven't attached them to the uh, the surface yet, as we still have a couple of steps.
to go. Uh, one of them is I'm going to be using a combination of uh, carpenter's glue and uh, a brad nailer. I picked this up over at um, Harbor Freight a couple of years back. Uh, I think it was like 49 bucks or, or something. Anyway, part number 97525. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a pneumatic nailer. So you're going to need an air compressor for it. Uh, if you're going to be doing a number of these canvases, these, this thing will it'll just pay for itself, really. What I'm going to do is take these off and basically flip them over, right? Like so. So that way. Position these in place. This is going to be the painted surface. Lining up this edge, I'm going to lay a, a strip of glue down, a bead of glue here, and then put probably five brads, five, five nails into uh, this edge. I'm using the other pieces of wood to support the panel. Come on. And as you're going along, just make sure this stays kind of flush with the uh, the edge of the panel. That's why I like to start at the corner instead of in the middle. That way I have a little bit of wiggle room. Now we're going to do the, uh, the next edge. Uh, let's go ahead and do this side. And just Basically we're just going to work our way around you know, until all four sides are done. I try to make these a uniform distance apart. I mean, if you're really anal, you can measure it all out. But anyway, this is pretty much what it looks like. What I'm gonna do is with the primer, like a thick gesso, I can go in and fill in these holes. Every once in a while, I'll run across a nail that isn't fully countersunk. So I'll take a little uh, hope, a punch steel punch and hammer and drive it down uh, beneath the wood. The intention is that if you're building a rectangular canvas like this, um, instead of just working from you know, one edge around like this, uh, it might be, it'll be better to, after you lay down one short edge, to go ahead and work on the two long edges. Then the last piece would be your last uh, short edge. And the reason why is because it's more important to have these long edges be true and square. And it's also easier to, uh, to cut down this short edge and maneuver it around so that it'll be flush. I already laid my glue down, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start nailing. And something else I like to do is just kind of line them up. Long edge nails. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And when you're using this nail gun, try not to shoot at an angle or else it'll either pop out, or actually worse yet, if you go too far this way, it'll pop out the side of your uh, canvas. Then you have to take a, na a hammer and try to hammer it back up and pry it out, or just hammer it flush. So now we get to this last corner, and it all looks pretty good. 
So I don't think I'd have very much trouble. The last thing to do would be to reinforce the corners by shooting two nails in here and two this way on each corner. Now, if you're building something uh, much larger than this, these this is a 36 by 15, um, warping starts to become an issue. So you'd be better off putting a, uh, a support right over here. Um, some people, they like to use these little wedges that you put in jam into the corners on this side, you know, it's like on, on each corner to Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do that on on this one. Well, after giving it a little bit of thought, I'm going to go ahead and create some uh, reinforcements over here, just for the sake of uh, showing you guys how it's done. What this is supposed to do is keep the uh, panel from uh, flexing and and warping a little bit. So I grab some uh, scrap wood. I just need to measure it out um, and it's going to fit inside this area right here. It'll just be a straight cut, you know, and then I'll uh, glue it down and use my nails to uh, hit it, you know, right in here and also over here and finally add a few nails to the surface to, uh, to attach the support. Okay, well, I cut this down and I got it to be a pretty nice snug fit. Since this is a three foot uh, canvas, I'm going to go ahead and measure it out so that it will be evenly spaced and divided. So that's about a foot right there. Take a little bit of glue. Now, uh, while I'm nailing this, I'm also applying some pressure over here so that the uh, frame is flush. We need some support is flush with the, uh, the rest of the frame and pressing into the uh, surface. And it's also going to be a little tricky because I can't see if I'm exactly centered or not. Yeah. Since this is going to be where some of the figures are in the painting, I don't want to add too many. I'm not going to add five like I did on the, the side. I'm probably going to do maybe three. Well, no, I guess I can do just one here, one here. That should be good. Now all I need to do is just install the other one and then we'll be ready to prime. Well we've assembled our panel and now we're going to get to the uh, priming stage. Um, I have a uh, 4 inch uh, gesso brush, it's a synthetic bristle and um, this ordinary plain uh, white gesso. And let's take out a nice big blob and lay it out there. And I'll just start brushing it out. And while I'm going along, I'm also trying to fill in some of these uh, nail holes. And if I can't get them after two or three coats of gesso, then 
Uh, hopefully they'll be covered by the paint itself when it, it can fill in these divots. Yeah, try not to brush too much because then you'll start to peel off little hairs of the brush and get them embedded into the, uh, the gesso and also you start to spread it out and get uneven patches where you can see the wood uh, bleed through. And once the, uh, the top has been primed, I'll also prime the sides because I like to, uh, to paint on all sides of uh, the canvas. That way, if, uh, if that way your client doesn't have to worry about buying a fancy frame for it. And adds a little bit of a three-dimensional quality to the work as well. And what I'm doing is I'm just carrying over some of the excess gesso across to try to create uh, a more even finish. Yeah, every once in a while, you know, I can take it across this way just to bring more of the gesso down. But always have your final coat go in the, the direction that the painting is ultimately going to be oriented. I'm also starting to get much lighter strokes just to try to have the brush texture be as minimal as possible. I'm also trying to pick out little things that get embedded. And since I'm painting out in the garage, I get a little dust and mosquitoes and whatever in here. As you can see, I gessoed the, uh, the sides of the canvas as well. And it doesn't look that great right now. So I'm going to go over this uh, probably two more times and then I'll move on to sanding the canvas. I like to use, um, start off with a 300 grit and then move to 400 and um, probably end with a 6. And in the process I'm going to try to uh, the next two coats, I'm going to try to fill in some more of these, these divots.